Hey everybody, welcome to our next screencast. Our topic today is the Great War. You can see there in the top left, it's the sinking of the Lusitania, which a lot of people would consider as the entry point for the United States into the war. That's simply not true. Below that is one of the most hazardous parts of the war, and that is trench warfare and the, and the battle in the trenches, and the area between that being no man's land. The picture to the right of that is the new technology of war being displayed, and that is gas and or chemical weapons. We're also going to talk about the murder of this guy, Archduke Franz Ferdinand, that starts the whole war off. So let's get this thing started. Our learning outcomes, you should be able to describe the reasons that World War I began, understand why the United States felt tied to Britain, and number three, explain the reasons the U.S. gets involved in the war even in the first place, because this is a European conflict, and a lot of people would consider that uh, the fact that the United States has nothing to do with this or shouldn't have anything to do with this. So the causes of World War I and the isms, the first one being militarism. The militarism itself is the development of armed forces and their uses as a tool of diplomacy, basically meaning one country is stronger militarily than the other, and they're going to take that smaller country over. Germany is the strongest military power in Europe by 1890. They're going to do something really smart and set up a reserve system that is going to draft and train their soldiers before they send them back off and to do the general work uh, for the country. This is going to allow them to mobilize much quicker than, say, the United States in 1917 that has to draft their soldiers and send them to boot camp before sending them off to Europe. Nationalism. Nationalism, very simply put, is love for your country and the rivalries among nations is going to cause a lot of this heightened nationalism at this point. And also, we can't forget imperialism. This is one of the most important factors in this whole entire time period from the late 1880s on forward. Many countries are really going to fear Germany's growing power and the fear that Germany is simply just going to roll over them and take every country over in Europe. Take a look at this map right here. This is going to show you 1914 map of Europe. Russia, Great Britain, France, and Italy are on really the major allies on one side. Italy is a little bit late in getting to this side here. They kind of flip-flop throughout the whole thing. And then Germany, Austria, Hungary, and uh, Ottoman Empire along with Bulgaria are on the central power side. So, again, more of a little world history review here. The Balkans area, which is this area right in here, is known as the powder keg of Europe. Uh, this point, everyone wants an, uh, access to this area. Um, the Germans want a rail line. I mean, it's, it's all sorts of chaos going on here. This guy right here, Gavrilo Princip, he's a member of the terrorist organization Black Hand, is responsible for the murder of Archduke Franz Ferdinand. Uh, he is going to end up shooting... Uh, Franz Ferdinand and his wife. And this is going to create a spark that's going to create this huge explosion in the area. Austria-Hungary at this point is going to declare war on Serbia, and that's really all it should have been. Let's go back for a second. Austria-Hungary, Serbia, you would think this would have been the war. Austria-Hungary is much larger, more than likely would have overtaken Serbia. Problem being, this guy over here, Russia, is like the big brother to the Serbs, so they're going to get involved pretty quickly. So, Austria-Hungary again declares war on Serbia, and it would have been a quick war between just Austria-Hungary and Serbia without the alliance system. The alliance system itself is supposed to keep countries out of war. In this case, it's going to pull all the countries into war. Uh, the Schlieffen Plan also as well should, if you remember back to um, world history, the idea was to take out the Western allies first and then turn all of the German resources to Russia because they considered them backwards and would probably take a while to mobilize. And again, the trenches being the most brutal part of the war along the Western Front for a total gain of pr approximately seven miles throughout the entire war. An easy way to remember this is mania, militarism, alliance system, nationalism, imperialism, and assassination. Again, easy way to remember the uh, five ways or five reasons that World War I started. Now the alliances itself, Triple Entente, these are the good guys, France, Britain, and Russia. The Triple Alliance, this is the early alliance, Germany, Austria, Hungary, and Italy. Again, Italy being the flip-flopper uh, very early on in the war. And then later, the central powers, Germany, Austria, Hungary, and the Ottoman Empire. Again, throw Bulgaria in there, but they're not that important in terms of the big players of the war. The Western Front here, this is again the the major battles uh, in, the, in the trenches along this line right here. And take a look. I mean, France is the one that's going to have the most damage done to it through with, with these uh, trench warfares. You have uh, these four major battles here. The Battle of Somme is just absolutely ridiculous in the amount of lives lost there. Now, no man's land. That's the most dangerous part. That's this area right here in the middle with barbed wire and landmines and all sorts of stuff here. 
and the three different types of trenches. You have the front line, the support, and the reserve trenches all in here. And here's a couple pictures. Again, funny how even in the trenches, guys are still smiling when the camera is present. You can see, again, the hazards of war, the hazard of the trenches. Maybe there was a, a, a grenade that got thrown in there. Who knows what happened? Here's this picture of the kind of storming over the uh, the wall of the trench there. Usually what would happen is artillery fire would, would come first, and then they would storm out of the trench and hopefully not get picked off by the enemy. Again, here's another picture of them storming out of the trench. This picture... This guy right here you can see in the center, he is keeping watch. Now, these other two guys are three guys that you see in this picture. They could be sleeping. Um, more, than, more than likely they are sleeping. I don't think they'd be dead at this point. Um, a lot of sleeping did occur during the day since a lot of the fighting did happen at night. Now, the United States, we want neutrality. We don't want to be part of it. it we don't feel like it's our war, and it really isn't our war. It's a European conflict at this point. However, we feel very tied to Britain for a couple of reasons, our heritage and our economic system, not to mention our government system as well. Uh, but being capitalists, we play both sides. We trade over two times more with Britain and France than we do with Germany. Uh, to the Allies, we give them approximately $2 billion in loans. We only give close to 30 to the Germans, so you can kind of see the disparity there. But again, we want to make that extra money. And what we're going to give them is dynamite, cannon powder submarines, copper wire, tubing, and armored cars. Because we're capitalists, we're going to play both sides. And if the war can go on longer while we're supplying both sides, we're going to make the money. We're going to come out the victor in that, in that sense. Now, the German U-boats. May 1915 is when the Lusitania is going to be sunk by the Germans. They're going to be engaging in something that is called unrestricted submarine warfare. In total, there's close to 1,200 people that die there, uh, a little, almost 130 Americans that die. The U.S. public opinion at this point is what is going to change against the Germans. We have a lot of people living in our country that are of German descent. So there's going to be quite a conflict there between do they feel American, do they feel more tied to Germany. And it's really going to play a large role in what happens here at home. The Germans are going to go ahead and sink two more ships with U.S. passengers on it. August 1915, the British Arabic, and also in March 1916, the French Sussex, which is going to just strengthen the feeling of the American public in opposition to the Germans. This is at a point where we're going to threaten a diplomatic split with the Germans, that we are simply going to uh, stop supplying them with anything unless they agree to change their, sub, uh, their submarine tactics. They would agree, but we had to try to convince the British to lift their blockade of the German ports, and we're just simply not going to do that. So there's going to be, again, more heightened problems here. Now, the undersea boat, this is what the what the uh, German term for U-boat is. Uh, you can kind of see here, it's a very fancy term for submarine, and this is one of the most advanced technological features of World War I. Here's the, uh, the Lusitania again, right before it sunk. And again, here's the New York Times headline, very similar to yellow journalism. Lusitania sunk by submarine, probably 1,260 dead, twice torpedoed off Irish coast, sinks in 15 minutes. What kind of emotions do you think there? Uh, Captain Turner saved, Froman and Vanderbilt missing. Okay, so you can kind of see here with the headline that it is going to engage their readers quite significantly. Now, what happens when the war hits home? Now, the war doesn't hit home figuratively. It, it more so is hypothetical. By 1917, we are ready for war. That's the public. However, Woodrow Wilson is going to run in 1916 on the platform of keeping us out of war, and he's going to try to ensure that he does keep our people out of war. The problem is we've loaned out that $2 billion. We have to try to make sure we get that money back. If the Germans win, we're never going to see that money again. It's going to spiral our economy out of control. So what we're going to try to do is not just ensure the repayment of the debt, but prevent Germans from threatening our U.S. shipping lanes uh, with this unrestricted submarine warfare. Woodrow Wilson has seen this war go on for over three years, and what he's going to call for is a peace without victory and a peace between equals. He sees that the Allies and the Germans and the Ottoman Empire are pretty much equal. There's no winning. There hasn't been a lot of winning on either side, and it's just been a lot of people dying. What he's going to do is call for basically a truce to just go home and quit fighting. The Germans are going to completely ignore Wilson here. It's really going to send send him kind of off into a, into a daze. He's really confounded by this. 
And Germany, in a sense as well, is going to implement, again, more unrestricted submarine warfare to provoke the United States to tell the British to withdraw their blockade. And just, that's just not going to be the right answer for the Germans. So the reasons for war in the United States. One of the big things is the Zimmerman note. It's a telegram from the German foreign minister to the German ambassador in Mexico. Hopefully this is, a, again, a refresher from world history. It's going to propose an alliance between Mexico and Germany. Mexico would get back their lost territories of uh, part of Texas, Arizona, and New Mexico. Luckily, it gets intercepted by the British. Uh, they're going to kind of bring it to light, and if it did go through, it would have forced the United States, if they declared war, to fight a two-front war, which is exactly what the Germans were having to do. Not to mention, the second major part for the reasons for war is that return to unrestricted submarine warfare by the Germans. Not just the Lusitania, the Sussex, and the Arabic, they're going to sink four more unarmed merchant ships, and that's going to start to put our public over the edge. And lastly, the Russian Revolution. With the Russians withdrawing from war, it's going to now leave us with democracies versus brutal monarchies and can and really give us a moral purpose to fighting the war on the side of the Allies. Before, with the Russians, things got a little cloudy for uh, how we're going to be a lot allied with uh, someone who is more of a brutal monarchy itself with the, with the Tsar. Here's a... Uh, a picture from of the Zimmerman note. You can kind of see here Texas, New Mexico, and Arizona there in the center. So take a look at this. Wilson is going to deliver his war resolution. Uh, property can be paid for the lives of peaceful and innocent people cannot. The present German submarine warfare against commerce is a warfare against mankind. We are glad to fight for the ultimate peace of the world and for the liberation of its people. The world must be made safe for democracy. Keep in mind, safe for democracy. We have no selfish ends to serve. We desire no conquest, no dominion. Strange, right? Imperialism, keep that in mind. According to what Wilson is saying here, we don't want anything but democracy, a world safe for democracy. We seek no indemnities. It is a fearful thing to lead this great peaceful people into war, but the right is more precious than peace. Again, he wants to make the world safe for democracy, and the United States, according to him right here, wants no conquest, no colonies, nothing in return. Kind of a very moral high horse viewpoint here. And again, Take a look at this uh, chart here of the Allies. You would think this war would have been so quick okay, prior to the United States entering war. The, uh, the countries that are on the side of the Allies and then the four central powers, Austria, Hungary, Bulgaria, Germany, and the Ottoman Empire. Those trenches just really confounded the problem uh, there in France and really, really caused the slowdown of the war to an incredibly snail pace. So let's recap. You should be able to describe the reasons that World War I began. Again, think the murder of Archduke and Verlo Princep, the assassination. Number two, understand why the United States felt tied to Britain. You have the economic system, you have the language, and you have the government style. And number three, explain the reasons the U.S. got involved in war. $2 billion, even in 1917, is a lot of money. And we really want to make sure that we're going to get that money back. So if you have any questions, let me know. Find me in class. Shoot me an email. Thank you for watching, and we will see you next time.